There have been several attempts to reinvigorate downtown over many, many years. And what it's really taken has been the injection of Tony Shea Zappos and the Downtown Project to get it sort of over the edge. Tony Shea is the CEO of uh, Zappos. He's taken $350 million and he's dedicated it to reviving downtown Las Vegas and 50 million of that he's dedicated to small businesses. He said, Kathy, you need to come visit. Come visit this summer and see what's going on downtown. To which I replied, Tony, you just invited me to the surface of the sun. I'm not going to Las Vegas in the summer. That's just stupid. So six months later, I moved from San Francisco to Las Vegas. I walked away from a 20-year career in the tech industry to follow my life passion, which has always been canine behavior and dog training. Company culture is our number one priority, and our belief is that if we get the culture right, then most of the other stuff like delivering great customer service or building a long-term enduring brand or business will just be a natural byproduct of all that. So that's kind of been our strategy at Zappos over the past 14 years now. Companies with strong cultures outperform uh, others that don't have strong cultures financially in, in the long run. Company culture is to a company as communities to a city. It's the exact same concept, just at a different scale. We're really excited about this move to the former City Hall because now there's an opportunity to actually have everything they need to live or play within walking distance. And that's kind of what initially spawned the idea of Downtown Project. The Downtown Project split up into four areas. We have land and buildings, education and community, small business development, and then the tech fund. We are in effect killing passwords, but we're a user authentication company that allows people to authenticate without typical username and passwords. It's a really cool feeling. You, you can really see the change as it's, as it's progressing. Every week you see new people. There are new companies happening all the time. There are startup weekends that birth new companies. There's construction going on right around the corner. You see all those changes happening. We cover tech startups and entrepreneurs around the country. We try to find the latest and greatest. In doing that, I've you know, interacted with a number of just different ecosystems. We moved out here in September to help build what is a city as a startup. We felt like we could impact you know, the community here that's still really early and growing. Tony is a perfect partner for Zirtual because he understands the human side of business. And that's a big thing that I, people didn't get in Silicon Valley. And it's the thing that, that bothered me. He realizes it's just not about numbers. It's not about a balance sheet. There's people's lives behind it. And that's where we really connected. What we found is people just need space, and it doesn't need to be pretty space, it just needs to exist and be accessible. Most innovation comes from something outside your industry being applied to your own, and so if we can get together diverse industry groups and entrepreneurs talking to each other who are, uh, have a bias towards talking and sharing versus not, you know, people are twice as likely to talk to each other than maybe you only need half the residential density. And so for someone like myself, uh, I'm out and about in a call a collision wall way uh, where I might run into someone whether it's out in the street or in a restaurant or a bar or a cafe or, or so on. Call it three or four hours a day times seven days a week. I maybe call it 40 weeks a year. Do the math and it works out to about a thousand collision wall hours per year. And so we actually shifted our thinking to instead of a hundred residents per acre, maybe what really matters is a hundred thousand collision wall hours per acre per year, which works out to 2.3 collision wall hours per square foot. And so it just gives you a whole new way of thinking about what types of small businesses we want to invest in and, and how to think about real estate and so on. We've invested into 21 tech startups and right about 20 small businesses at this point. But right now we own just about everything in green within that area. Many different buildings have been added into the downtown project, a lot of new land, uh, much of which we're not quite sure what to do with yet. The great building there is uh, a new building. Uh, we'll be having our second tech co-working space over there. Every month, we bring together a group of people, around 25 to 30 folks from around the world, who are involved in tech in some way. The idea is we get to bring them here to kind of you know, bring some knowledge to the community, to meet, to interact, to have some experiences together, ultimately just to have a great Build-A-Tech community. Our primary criteria for uh, bringing in companies uh, is very similar to a typical VC firm. Uh, however, we do add on top of that the community element. It's very important for us to know that any team that's coming into this has a feel for the bigger why behind what we're doing and values the importance of giving before they get and interacting and engaging with the community all along the way.
It's really important for us, for the businesses here, to be owner-operated, locally owned and operated. We want our own unique identity and they need to be super passionate about it, make this a place of energy, inspiration, entrepreneurism, creativity. A lot of our principles are just derived from Triumph of the City by Ed Glazier. I think a lot of city revitalization projects try to attempt what he refers to in the book as the edifice complex, where you just build an expensive, beautiful building and then hope they'll come. And we've really taken the much more organic approach. This culture of openness, sharing, collaboration, and community focus, so they all kind of feed off of each other and want to help each other. My mom now works for Zirtual, uh, which is awesome. It's amazing working with my mom. She's really rad. She's like the hardest worker out of all of us. Everybody always says that. That's her answering the phone. Like I said, month to month, no sign up fees, no contract, uh, so you're not tied in in any way. There's no reason why you can't have fun, family, uh, livelihood, stimulation, education, all wrapped into one thing, and it can be where you work. This wall right here has really just come to affectionately be known as our magical post-it note wall o ideas. They were all put here by members of the community who were answering the question, what do you want in your downtown? Actually, a really great story is this one. It's Eat by Natalie. I've been a chef for 25 years in Las Vegas, all over the four corners. So I was working at this place that I didn't care for. Spiritually and physically, it was bad for me. Gonna move back to Santa Fe. Run into my friend Michael, Michael and Jennifer. And he said, is there anything we can do to keep you here? And I said, no. And he said, what about your own restaurant? And I said, I don't have any money. And he goes, what if you don't need any money? He walks me over to Tony. I said, Tony, I'm Natalie. Nice to meet you. He's like, I know who you are. What size restaurant do you want? You put something on paper, find a space, and let's get something going. So in that transition between being funded, getting the restaurant open, is when I was struggling. My personal finances were struggling because I didn't have a job. I didn't have any income coming in for eight months. I called Michael. I was crying. It's not coming out of my nose. Just like, you know, like that ugly cry where you're like, oh man, it's the end, right? Call him up. He's like, hold on, hold on. Like 10 minutes later, ding dong. Open the door, it's Jennifer. She goes, can I come in? And I go, sure. She goes, how much do you need? And I get teary eyed, I get choked up. Cause who does that? Went and paid my rent. And then uh, like 15 minutes later, she comes with uh, a month's worth of groceries. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. I'm actually a regular. Professional salad eater. Watch me go. <laughs> it's real, and it sounds like rainbows and unicorns, and it sounds like it's too good to be true, but it's hard. I mean, it's urban revitalization. It's not easy. I was walking around downtown with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago who's born and raised here in Las Vegas. She said, you know, it's the first time I've been downtown for something social, and I'm not carrying my gun. 50% of humans are living in cities. And within our lifetimes, that's gonna be 75% of humans, which is just bonkers to think about. If we figure out how to fix cities, we figure out how to fix the world. Tony means everything he says. You know, he's here to deliver happiness. The people who are investing in these businesses at the highest level, the downtown project, these people are gonna make money. They're not stupid, but it's not why they're doing it. They're doing it because they want to create a place where people can find their passion and then live it. It's really actually more about thinking long term. From our point of view, I guess we really view it as uh, helping accelerate other people's dreams. Mm -hmm.